Welcome to Drawing a Little House using two-point perspective. You're going to need a ruler and a sharp pencil or a mechanical pencil. Let's start by placing our vanishing points. Find the center of the right side of your paper and then find the center of the bottom half. Place a point right in the middle of those two points. Or you could measure 3 and 3 eighths inches from the bottom of your page with a ruler. Make sure that your mark on the left edge is also the same distance from the bottom of your paper. Let's go ahead and connect those two vanishing points with a horizon line or also called an eye level. We're going to start by drawing a large box and then turn that box into a little house. Find the center of your horizon line and then the center of the right half and put a mark directly between those two points. That's where we'll lay out our first vertical line to create a box. This line is three inches long, two inches is above the horizon line, and one inch is below the horizon line. Go ahead and connect both the top and the bottom of your vertical line to the vanishing point on the right and to the vanishing point on the left. Now we'll do the top, one line to the vanishing point on the right, and one line to the vanishing point on the left. There we are. Now it's time to define the outer edges of our box. Find the center of your paper and then the center of the left half and put a mark right in the middle of those two points. This is where we'll find the left edge of our box, of our little house. The right edge of our little house should be directly between the large vertical corner of our box, the first vertical line we drew, and the vanishing point on the right. Make sure that your box looks as though it's shifted just a little to the right of the center of the page, and you know you did it right. Go ahead and erase the horizon line inside of your box and the guidelines from your vanishing points. We don't need those anymore. All right, so the next thing we'll do is create an opening like a doorway. Let's start by drawing a vertical line close to the left edge of our box, straight up and down, and stop before you get to the top. Notice that the gap between my new vertical line and the top of our box is about the same as the two lines on the left of our box are far apart. We're going to use vanishing point on the left, I'll call it vanishing point number one, and draw a short line away from vanishing point number one. Think about the proportions of a doorway. The top of your doorway should be about as wide as half of the height of your doorway. And then draw a line straight down to complete the shape of a doorway. In order to make our doorway look 3D, we'll need two short lines from the corners of the doorway on its left and we need to draw those two short lines towards the vanishing point on the right. We'll call that one vanishing point number two. Now the truth is this isn't a doorway. It's just an opening. We're really creating a column. So go ahead and connect the tips of those two short lines that you just drew with a vertical line. Be sure your line is completely straight up and down. And that'll create the inner edge of a door frame or a column. And let's use vanishing point number one on the left to handle that dangling corner so that we can see the underside of the opening of our doorway. This next step is important. We need to draw a short line inside of our doorway from vanishing point number two towards the outside lower left corner of our box. Notice this line lines up with the bottom left corner of the box, not the doorway. What we've really drawn is a column. 
Okay, it's time to put an eave on our house. I've drawn a very short line hanging off the top left edge of our box, and I'll draw another line using the vanishing point on the right, vanishing point number two, away from vanishing point number two. That just defines how far out the eave of our house will hang. And then we'll use vanishing point number one to draw a line toward or back towards the center of our house. Again, this is the eave of a roof. We'll need to draw a short line that comes out from behind the top right corner of our box, just like we did a short line that came out from the top left corner of our box. You can almost see the eave now. By connecting the tips of those two dangling lines together, we'll at least complete the overhang of a roof. Now we're just missing the roof. That's okay. We'll draw it next. We're going to draw a box, basically, on top of this house, and then carve a roof shape out of that box. So, from the three corners of the eave that we can see, let's draw a line straight up all the way to the top of our page. Incidentally, I'm working on a 9 by 12 sheet of paper. A typical sketchbook size. All right, just be sure that your vertical lines are truly vertical, and that means that they are parallel to the right and left edge of your paper. There we are. It looks like a huge box. Find a spot near the top of your page along the center vertical line of the roof box and draw down towards vanishing point number one. Do the same thing on the other side. Draw from that point that's about a half of an inch below the top edge of our paper down to vanishing point number two. There we are. Now we have a very large box on top of our very little house. Erase the parts of the lines that you don't need anymore. And let's shape this into a roof. I'm going to find the center of the front left side of our box, the approximate center. It should be a line that's slightly closer to the small side, the left edge of our side, than it is the right edge of the side. And do the same thing on the right. Find the approximate center of the right side of our large box on top of our house and draw a vertical line. These are just guidelines. Now what we need to do is, is finish drawing the top of this box as though it were made of glass. So from the top left corner of the big box, draw towards vanishing point number two on the right, and from the top right corner of our big box, draw towards vanishing point number one. Now we can see the box as though it were made of glass. We're going to put a plus sign or crisscross two lines across the top of our glass box, and we're using those guidelines, those vertical guidelines that we created before, to do so. There we are. So hopefully you can see that X in the middle of the top of the box as having found um, the, the centers of that top. Put a, put a little dot along the line that slopes downward to the right. Put two dots equal distances from the center of that plus sign that's on top of our box. We're going to use those two dots and we're going to draw some straight lines, not using the vanishing points, down to the corners of our house. So we're carving a roof out of this box. There we are. Now you can maybe you can start to see it as a roof inside of a glass box. From the lower point that we've identified on the right, draw down to the top outside right corner of our eave. There we are. Now we can erase the box that was on top of our house and we'll be left with a realistic shaped, a realistic form for a roof on top of our little house in perspective. Let's go ahead now and draw a smaller box connected to our house. This is going to be a garage. Using vanishing point number one, I've drawn a short line, or relatively short, about halfway between the house 
in the left edge of my paper. I'm drawing a short line, and you may be able to draw that line back into the doorway that you created. That's not really a doorway. It's the opening to a small porch, so we can see all the way through it. I'm drawing a dotted line just to find about where the top of our second box should be so that I can draw a line from that point down towards vanishing point number one. It's pretty much a line that's in line with the top of our door frame. Maybe that'll help. Now all we have to do is add in a vertical line between those two guidelines that we drew towards vanishing point number one and that'll create the front side of a second box. This box needs a roof as well. So I'll stretch out the top left corner's edge and start an eave the same way. There we are. From the tip of that line that comes out from behind our garage box, go ahead and draw a line across the top of the garage box using vanishing point number one. These lines are very close together, so you'll need to make sure your pencil is sharp or it's a small mechanical pencil. Small diameter lead. All right. Now we just need to complete the roof of our garage. There's some room to guesstimate here. You can see I've drawn a line that comes out from behind our house towards finishing point number one. And I'm going to connect that with a line that is parallel to our house's roof edge. Okay, that line, that last line I just drew, did not come from a vanishing point. It was a guesstimation. Draw a line straight down on the right side of your house. We're going to add a little detailing to the profile of the right side of the house. Go ahead and erase part of the bottom right edge, the back half, and move that line up using vanishing point number two. This is just to keep the right side of the house from being too plain since the front side has a doorway. We may also need to move the top, the corresponding top edge of the back side of the right side of our house down a little bit as well. There we are. Don't worry that the eave hangs over farther on the back half of the right side of the house. Let's add a dormer. A dormer is a detail, an architectural feature that comes off of the roof of a house. Sometimes you may find a dormer with a window or with a vent. So I found the center of the front of our roof with a guideline and used vanishing point number two to draw away from that guideline the distance that I want my dormer to stick out from the roof. Draw straight down from that line's point. It looks like a thin triangle on our roof. We're going to turn that into a form. Using vanishing point number two, I've drawn a line at the, to the bottom of that triangle where it meets the center guideline on the front of the roof. And now I'll draw down to the outside points of that new line to create a triangle that would be symmetric on its right and left side if we were to look straight at it. But of course we're looking at it from an angle. Go ahead and connect the back of your dormer's points so that it looks solid where it meets the roof. And erase the lines that you no longer need. It kind of looks like a pyramid coming off of the roof. I'm going to go ahead and put a frame around the front of this dormer by simply drawing some lines that are parallel to its outer right and left edge. There we are. I 
I think I'd like to put a dormer on the right side of the roof as well. So find the center of the eave on the right side and draw a line to the center of the ridge on the top of our roof. This is just to find the middle of the side so we know where our dormer should be placed. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find a dot or a spot just below the ridge line of our roof and we're going to draw away from that spot using vanishing point number one, the vanishing point on the left, draw a line away from that spot so that it sh such that it feels as though the dormer hangs out from the roof about the same distance as the dormer on the front. Let's take the bottom of the dormer on the front and stretch it out to the corner of our roof and wrap it around using vanishing point number two, wrap it around to the right side of our roof. There we are. This is to ensure that both dormers come down the roof the same amount, the same distance, so they feel like they belong on the same house. This dormer is a little more challenging because we're looking at it at more of an angle, but we're going to we're going to choose two spots to aim at along the guideline that we wrapped around the lower portion of our roof from the front. There we are. I've chosen two points. Notice that the point towards the back of the house is slightly closer to the center of our dormer because it's farther away. And we'll just draw from the point of our glass triangle down to those two spots that we identified along the bottom edge of our dormer. Go ahead and connect the two back points of our dormer so that we can see a corner where the dormer meets the roof. All right, let's erase some of that business that we don't need inside of our dormer anymore. Clean that up a little bit where we could see the roof line through it. We don't need that guideline that we used that we wrapped around the bottom portion of the roof. That was just a guide, so we can erase that as well. 